I thought I'd do the second part of this series looking at uh, the SN76477 sound generator. This IC is only responsible for one sound effect in Space Invaders, which we'll hear later, but it has a number of other functions which I, which I thought I'd uh, showcase. So here's the uh, SN76477, and uh, there are two physical forms, the NF, which is what you're looking at, um, and that has a narrower than standard pin layout. And then we have the N version, which has a st standard pin layout. And both of these are uh, uh, 14 pins each side. Uh, but as you can see here, I've had to build up a little adapter board in order to fit the uh, IC onto a standard breadboard. So other than the schematics uh, from the Tato model uh, that I, uh, I showed in the last video, I have two other documents. Um, so the first is, uh, let me just get there, the first is this data sheet here. Uh, let me just go up to the top of the data sheet. Uh, and as you can see, this is uh, photocopied off, off something here, so it's a, it's a little bit out of alignment. So I've got this data sheet here, um, and also I've got this uh, very handy uh, guide function, uh, guide uh, document here. Uh, complex sound generation using the SN76477. And this is uh, actually a TI document uh, that comes, uh, you know, comes straight from TI. I'm not sure exactly how long ago it was, but it, it was at least the sort of the mid, uh, mid to late uh, 1970s. Quickly have a look at uh, the block diagram uh, of the uh, SN76477. Uh, Let me just uh, get there for a, for a moment. So here's the block diagram and let's just walk through some of the uh, functionality that, uh, that exists in this IC. So the first thing we have, uh, and you can see that up the top, um, is this so-called super low frequency oscillator. Um, and this uh, SLF has two functions. It can either drive uh, in frequency modulation fashion the VCO or it can act as a, as a VCO itself. Now the second uh, major component is this uh, VCO, uh, and the VCO uh, provides uh, square waves. Uh, th th these all provide square waves, um, uh, square waves output. Uh, but you can external drive this VCO with uh, resistor capacitor combination, or you can have the uh, SLF drive the VCO. And having the SLF drive the VCO is uh, is what we uh, is what the Space Invaders um, uh, circuit actually does. The final uh, piece of functionality is this noise generator, uh, and you can use that noise generator to generate gunshots, explosions, that sort of thing. Um, interestingly, the uh, well, you've already seen the uh, noise generator on the um, in Space Invaders. It doesn't use the uh, SN76477 in any way to generate noise. So some other functionality that exists in here, uh, you can see down the bottom left-hand side, it's a little hard to read, but that says one-shot circuit. Um, so basically the one-shot circuit allows to have specific timed segments uh, of audio output. Moving on, we have this envelope select logic and the envelope generator, and that allows you to control, uh, if you have the one-shot uh, enabled, it allows you to control the attack and decay uh, of the sound. And uh, we'll see an example of that a little bit later. Finally, uh, we have this mixer, and this mixer is controlled by pins 25 through 27, and it allows you to uh, select one or more of the uh, SLF, VCO, and noise generator in the output. Now, interestingly, it actually does, it doesn't really mix them, it does a logical AND between the uh, waveforms of the three inputs here. Uh, so it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting bit of retro technology. This um, very, very different to uh, some of the more modern sound chips. Interesting note is that pretty much all of the control of the above is limited to changing external resistors and capacitors. There's no real microcontroller interface that you can that you've seen on some of the other uh, sound generator chips. Um, as I said before, all the sounds emitted, they're all square waves. Um, there's no sine waves that come, that come out of this. So rather than go on anymore, uh, I thought I'd do a few examples. So the first is going to be the classic Space Invader UFO sound. Um, and then what I'll use is that example to demonstrate the one-shot functionality uh, with attack and decay control. 
And then finally, uh, I'll demo the noise functionality with a gunshot and an explosion sound so we can see that. Anyway, so let's move right on to the uh, classic Space Invaders sound. So this circuit uh, produces the classic Space Invaders UFO sound. Um, so in this circuit, the SLF is configured at a frequency of, of about 5 hertz. And this frequency is controlled by the capacitor at pin 21 together with the resistor at uh, pin 20. And the frequency of uh, oscillation is uh, governed by the formula 0.64 divided by the resistor times the capacitor. Uh, so in this case we have 0.64 all divided by 120k times 1 times 10 to the minus 6 which is about 5.3 uh, hertz. Uh, next the VCO is configured to have its frequency controlled by the SLF by bringing pin 22 high. So by controlled uh, basically the VCO's frequency of, of operation will be controlled by the uh, sawtooth that's generated by the SLF. So as the SLF moves high, the VCO will, uh, frequency will go down and uh, vice versa. The VCO minimum frequency will be controlled by this combination of uh, resistor and capacitor at pins 18 and 17 respectively. Uh, and again, the same formula that exists for the SLF, so 0.64 times RVCO times CVCO. So in this case the minimum uh, frequency for the VCO is about 745 Hertz. Now the max frequency is interestingly not configurable but set to the minimum frequency times about 10. Uh, so that gives around about uh, uh, 7, uh, 7 kilohertz as the maximum frequency. Uh, finally the mixer is set to output uh, from the VCO by bringing pins 25 through to 27 all to ground. So interestingly, um, the Space Invaders uh, circuit, the, the Tato circuit, has a resistor on pin 10 to ground. Now, in this, uh, pins 10, uh, 8, and 7 are to do with the um, uh, attack and decay circuitry. Um, so I'm not quite sure why pin 10 was included in there. It doesn't have any functionality in, the, in this particular circuit at all. And then finally, I uh, actually don't uh, made a little mistake on the circuit here. Uh, you bring pin 9 to ground when you want to hear the sound. And we'll see that on the uh, circuit. I've got a little push button which uh, brings the circuit to ground. Anyway, enough talk. Let's hear this in action. All right, so the big moment. Uh, so you can see here I've got, uh, let me just zoom out a little bit. Uh, so you can see that. So here's pin now 9 down the bottom. I've got that connected to a little push button switch. That goes off to ground and when it's grounded it, it actually uh, enables the, the sound I see. So along the top here we have uh, here's pin, pin 22 which is raised high. Uh, th these two caps here are the uh, SLF, uh, sorry these, this cap and this resistor are the SLF control. Here's the VCO control right here. All right Enough talking, let's hear the sound. So interestingly, that's, uh, that sounds a little bit faster in, in frequency than the, um, uh, than the uh, actual Space Invaders sound, but there's definitely, that is definitely the uh, UFO sound from Space Invaders. Okay, so just to prove that uh, these capacitors and resistors are having an effect, what I'll do is I'll replace this one microfarad capacitor on the SLF with a, uh, uh, a 4.7 microfarad capacitor and we should hear the, uh, uh, the frequency of, uh, of that uh, pulsing sound uh, increase. So, uh, sorry, decrease. Uh, so anyway, let's do that and come back. Okay, so I've replaced that uh, capacitor. You can see there, there's that 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Now when I press the button, you can see that you can hear that the frequency of the SLF's oscillation has decreased. So anyway, let's move on now to uh, attack and decay control um, and uh, see that in action. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, move on now to the one-shot functionality which allows for timed uh, bursts of uh, sound and, and that uh, consists of two parts. So first you have to configure the one-shot uh, resistor and capacitor and the duration is governed by this formula here which is 0.8 times 
are at one shot times um, capacitance at one shot. Uh, and so what I've got is I've got a one mega ohm resistor and a uh, one microfarad capacitor. Uh, and so that should result in a uh, one shot duration of about 0.8 of a second. Now the other part of the uh, one shot involves uh, uh, configuring the attack and decay envelope. So you, you can't just configure the one shot, you've got to actually configure the uh, attack and decay envelope as well. So what I'll do is I'll um, basically configure the attack and decay envelope to give a, an immediate ramp. So let's move to that section of the document. Okay, so the attack and decay is controlled by uh, three external components. There's the uh, attack resistor, which is on pin 10, there is the decay resistor, which is on pin 7, and then there's the capacitor uh, that is used for both attack and decay, uh, which is on pin 8. So what I've got, got it currently configured for is uh, my attack resistor is 10K, uh, my uh, attack and decay capacitor is 1 microfarad, and the decay resistor is 10K as well. So if you multiply 10K by um, one microfarad, which is what I've got in there, uh, that comes out to about 0.01 of a second. Uh, so what we should see is a fairly immediate ramp up and then uh, a fairly immediate ramp down. And because I've got the one shot configured at about 0.8 of a second, we, even though we're pressing the button continuously, we should see a, uh, a sound of about 0.8 of a second produced. But anyway, let's uh, move over and check that out on, uh, on the oscilloscope and hearing it. Okay, so uh, here's the setup here. Uh, this is pin um, pin eight, the attack and de the attack and de decay capacitor, which is one microfarad, and then I've got a pair of uh, 10k resistors on pin ten, which is the uh, uh, which is the attack resistor, and a 10k resistor on pin uh, seven, which is the decay resistor, and then you can see over here. I've got that uh, one mega ohm resistor and one microfarad capacitor on the one shot pins. So let's just hear that. And what we should hear is I'll press this button, hold it down, but we should only get 0.8 of a second of sound. So you can hear that the, uh, the sound only goes for 0.8 of a second. Let's have a look at, the, on, at that on the oscilloscope, make sure it's all focused here. And let's just pause that so we can see how wide that waveform is. And if I, let me just adjust the horizontal time base. So that's at 500 milliseconds of division there. So you can see that's a, a second there. So roughly 0.8 of a second in total. So let's now uh, change the attack and decay uh, resistor values. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a... Uh, one mega ohm resistor in the um, uh, in the attack and de decay pass, uh, resistors, and we should see a uh, a slope on uh, on key on, key down. All right, so I've got a pair of one mega ohm resistors in the attack uh, attack and decay resistor pins, pins seven and ten. And let me press the button, and as you can see there, we've got a nice attack and decay envelope. Let me uh, change that to a pair of 330K resistors and we should see um, a more rapid ramp up and ramp down. Okay, so I've got that uh, pair of 330K resistors in there. Let's uh, hear the result and see it on the oscilloscope. So you can see there that uh, there's a steeper ramp now on the attack and decay. So anyway, that's uh, demonstrating one shot, attack and decay. What we'll move on to now is some noise generation. Okay, so we're ready to move on to the final example here. And uh, this is uh, using the noise generator to generate some explosion sounds. And we'll do a gunshot sound after this. So uh, just to go through um, some of the uh, settings here. So the one shot pins uh, act as exact exactly the same as before so this governs the sort of the length of that sustained time of the the waveform uh, similarly the attack and decay um, uh, resistor and capacitor resistors and capacitor act exactly the same but with the noise we introduce a uh, little mistake there let me get rid of that 
we introduce uh, a, a couple of new new pins here, and that is the uh, noise um, clock. And that, if you want to use the internal noise generator, you need to put a 47 uh, kilo ohm resistor to ground. And then there is this resistor and capacitor here, which act as uh, the filter uh, that controls um, the, the pitch of the noise itself. So the, the formula for that is right here, and you can see here, so it's uh, the 3dB cutoff frequency. So this is effectively a low pass filter is 1.28 divided by uh, R noise times C noise. So if you increase the value of the capacitor or resistor, you uh, decrease the 3 dB cutoff frequency. So uh, these are, just let me swap back here, uh, 330K and 330 picofarad. Uh, respectively between that. So uh, for the gunshot you want a higher pitch sound so we'll be uh, uh, decreasing the value of this resistor here. But anyway let's hear the uh, explosion sound and uh, see it on the oscilloscope. Okay so there's the uh, uh, connections as I went through there. There's that 2.2 mega ohm resistor uh, this is the uh, 330 picofarad capacitor, the 330 uh, kilo ohm resistor. Anyway, let's have a, a look at the oscilloscope, and then we can uh, then we can actually hear the noise. Bear with me; I'll just zoom out a little bit. Okay, here we go. So there you can see the uh, see and hear that uh, explosion sound, and then if we uh, zoom in to the actual noise generated, you can see it's very similar to that noise that was generated. Uh, and I believe it actually does do a use a linear shift register internally to uh, to generate the noise. Uh, but there's the uh, as you can see, we've got a very abrupt attack and then a fairly gradual decay. So let's move on now to the uh, gunshot example. Okay, so uh, just to go through the changes, I did cre decrease the uh, one-shot time. It's now a 680K resistor and a uh, uh, 0.22 microfarad capacitor. And then on the attack and decay, I've, uh, I changed uh, that 2.2 uh, meg resistor for a uh, 330K resistor. And then finally, I replaced a 330K resistor on the... Um, uh, on the noise filter with a 68k. So basically we're going to have a higher pitch tone but and less uh, sort of a, a more pronounced uh, uh, attack and decay. Anyway, so let's listen to this. It's not quite a gunshot, maybe a uh, some kind of uh, laser, but uh, but anyway, that's the uh, that's the examples I have uh, planned for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will do a part three uh, where I go on to uh, looking at, uh, at some of the other sounds using the LM3900s uh, in, uh, in the circuit. I hope you enjoyed this uh, walkthrough of some uh, retro tech uh, with the 76477. I certainly enjoyed it, and uh, uh, that's all for now. Catch you later.